It's another sunny, pleasant day on the streets of Pinewood and Shepparton, where there's never a traffic jam on the high street, you can be sure of a seat at the coffee shop, and the builders always finish on time. But in Filmland, you're never far from high drama. On Beam Me Up, things are tense. But I don't want a fire, you... On Gale Force 10, they're stormy. Wait a minute. So Dan, 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 we can't. And on Brainiac, they're explosive. Pinewood. At the underwater stage, the team are gearing up for what will be their hardest day of shooting on the Belgium film Gale Force 10. And they know it. Uh, well, this is the worst day of the shoot, because today we need to do the things that we didn't do yesterday, so uh, it's going to be a mess today, I think, but uh, we try to do our best. Uh, we try to keep as much as possible our storyboard. The Belgian director of photography, Danny Axel, knows that the one person he must work well with to keep the storyboard on track is British location producer Francoise Valentine. We've got a lot, a lot to do, a lot to catch up on. I, I'm not waiting for this, I'm waiting. So Dan, Dan, I see rehearsal now. Dan, Dan, we can't. The artists are being trained up how to do it. The sequence we're shooting at the moment is um, when the ship has sunk and he's fallen into the water, it's attached a rope round him, so it's pulling this guy underwater and it's pulling him deep, deep down. His friend, who's noticed that that's happened, has dived in after him and trying to catch up with him while the boat is sinking and pulling him down to cut his rope to bring him back up. Once they're done, yeah. then we're shooting on them. We're not okay. doing any rehearsals. No, I, haven't I got want enough. to see a rehearsal of the waves with another lighting. Perfect, that's not a problem. With the ca two camera. Francoise normally works with her husband, Mike Valentine. Mike, can we have you back down? He is one of Britain's most experienced underwater cameramen. Every spare member of the crew is busy chopping up broccoli to dirty up the water, along with milk and gravy browning, which are already in place at the bottom of the tank. Mike and his camera are in position. So are the actors. Francoise talks to them from the surface. You OK there, Gary? Next to Francoise is the Belgian director, Hans Herberts, and some of the camera shots he wants will have to be dropped Three, if the schedule slips. Two, turn over! One! And action! Action, Kevin! But suddenly, there is a problem with the rope. The rope untied, I take it. OK. While the divers try to fix the problem, the actors take a breather. More delay. It looks like there's a storm brewing. Down a side street at Shepparton, behind an ordinary door, is model maker Bill Pearson's magical workshop. Yeah. Bill's work has appeared on screen in everything from Alien to Red Dwarf. The biggest and bestest was Alien. You know, so I, I started at the top. Bill designed spaceships and time machines. This craft goes back in time and captures a dinosaur, brings it to the present. Everything would close up and it would zoom back to the present. After more than a quarter of a century designing the weird and wonderful, where does Bill get his inspiration from? Uh, Argos, the 99p shops, uh, where you realise that, well, I um, hope you don't realise that these are uh, windscreen wipers. These very intricate sheets are doormats. We built this here at Shepparton uh, using all my usual things out of pound shops. There's uh, some one pound water pistols on the top. Uh, part of a tractor model. It's all there, another front of a tractor, top of a sunglass case. Today, Bill is off to celebrate some good news with colleague Mike Shaw. Bill has been hired for the Bond movie shooting at Pinewood, Casino Royale. You'll have a Bond under your shirt, won't you? Which is nice. Last week, the movie Beam Me Up hit a problem, dirt on the film. 
Oh, there it is, there it is, look, that is a, a massive hair in the gate there. Producer Mari Sutherland wasn't sure whether the camera equipment was to blame or clap a load of stew, but it meant she was going to have to organise a reshoot. We then have to sit down and work out the scenes that have to be shot and actors find that hard to do. Uh, a bit pissed off. We have to reshoot this scene and um, I don't like reshooting scenes, but um, because I felt I nailed it. OK, guys, we'll do another one, yeah? It's a serious blow. They are desperate to finish in time for the Cannes Film Festival, and clap a load of stew is under real pressure. It was a lot tougher than I expected it would be. Stew has been called in by Mari. She is not sure whether the gear is at fault or he is. I don't want to fire you. One, because I know that you've worked on other films with us and I've been generally happy with what you've done. I can only think it's a magazine issue. Oh, well, until that point, you know, you've got a, a kind yeah. of reprieve. On set, director Robbie Moffat has got the actors back for the reshoot. A three years salary in the bank. I want to get back in spending. I don't, I don't know why I keep getting cast as Italians, but um, I, I seem to be pulling it off. OK, Paul, so you're, you're key to this. You're actually at the core of this with the animation. Make sure you risk your risk go right round. Yeah, yeah. Let's show me. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, yeah, I know. So, yeah. no, swivel right round. Yeah. Do the full Italian yeah, thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Stand by for rehearsal. Meanwhile, they are checking the suspect film magazines. A tough wait for Stu. As soon as we figure out if it's the magazine, then we'll bollock the um, hire company. If it's them, it may, again, it may be Stuart. We'll see. But it's good news for Stuart. There's been no recurrence of the hair in the gate. Stu is still on the movie. I'm still here. Um, I haven't left a job yet in the middle of it. I've always seen one out to the end. I think we've sorted out what the problem was. We've isolated a magazine, which may have been um, causing that particular difficulty. The latest pictures are fine, and they've nearly finished editing. So what could possibly go wrong? We got a call on Saturday morning asking us to call the courier. And... Um, I thought, well, I didn't think much about it. Uh, but it turned out that uh, we'd lost two cans of film, that can 108 and can 109 had uh, disappeared off the back of a courier's bike on the A40 on the way into London. Over at Pinewood, after months of work, producer Paul Hitchcock is back from Hollywood. He was there to get director John Woo to approve the set designs for the movie he's hoping to launch. We came back on a very, very positive note, yes. Uh, John approved nearly 90% of the, the stuff we took. We had a definite plan. We went over various crew members that he wanted to be employed, uh, and we really were hoping to go into pre-production fully within two weeks of us being back. John wanted to shoot this film, as I think I mentioned before, no later than July, and so that he's free to do his other film in China next year. But with the final script not finished, their French co-producer still had reservations. The whole project has been put on hold. Canal Plus decided that they did not want to uh, proceed with the film this year because they felt that they were rushing to go into pre-production before they were happy with the script. It means Paul's detailed schedule will have to be binned at least until next year. It was a big disappointment, but I equally I know it was a big disappointment to John Wu as well. And over at Shepparton, producer Bill Shepard has also got back from Hollywood, where he's been pitching his film, Vita and Virginia. They really love the script. They're putting their side of the money together now. Well, I'm going to do this this summer. Um, I think it's really now, it's just a question of finishing off the casting. I've got Emily Watson, she's going to play Virginia. She's already been nominated for two Oscars anyway. Uh, Naomi Watts is going to be playing Vita. I mean, what, I, what I found with Hollywood was anyway, as against with here, that the people out there, if they like what you've got, then they say, fine, let's do it. It's really just sorting out the details now. You know, making sure that the deal's right and things like that. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. In the furthest reaches of Pinewood, beyond even the underwater stage, lie the Badlands. This is the backlot. Today, it's been taken over by TV people, making the anarchic kid science series Brainiac, whose viewers have especially requested some explosive action. 
special effects expert, Andy McVean, is happy to oblige. He's blowing up a fish tank for them. Oh, yes, very confident. I think it'll be very pretty, actually. And action. It may not look like much, but their special slow-mo camera should have recorded the shockwaves blowing the fish tank apart. <laughs> Andy's next task is trickier. I think we're probably going to be blowing up some uh, big watermelons in a minute. Andy has to blow up a stack of melons with staggered explosions followed by a burst of fuel to produce a fireball all in a few thousandths of a second. When we see our melons explode, we want to actually see every single particle being flung over a large distance. Ten, nine, eight, coming up. All systems are go in outer space, underwater and on land. In London's film land at Pinewood Studios, it's a regular Thursday morning. The boys have nipped out to the back lot with their explosives. Andy McVeigh has planted a whole series of charges in this stack of melons. With careful timing, the fuel will explode last, sending a fireball through the cloud of melon debris. All in a few thousandths of a second. Here we go. Well, everything looked OK, but only the slow-mo camera will show what really happened. The charges explode with split-second precision. But they're puzzled. There should be one more explosion, the fuel charge. Ah, success. There's little, little particles that are just separating away and coming towards camera. It looks fantastic. Model maker Bill Pearson is taking Mike Shaw out to lunch. He is celebrating being hired to work on the latest Bond movie. But this one's a different Bond, of course, isn't it? Well, this is the first Bond, isn't it? Well, the first. In his day, Mike Shaw supplied equipment and props to 19 Bond movies. Mike has a knack for finding high-tech aerospace equipment, some of it used in Bill's models. I remember you came in and uh, you said, this is nice. So it looks like a robot arm. You said, uh, oh, yeah, I just picked it up. It was uh, a prototype yeah. uh, for the uh, Concords cockpit. Yeah. I got it for 25 quid, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. and it used it on Red Dwarf. There's a bit of dressing. But... Yeah. I'm a finder more than anything, you know. Well, there's always f first name terms to people in the scrapyards. When we did Memphis Mike's Bell. finest hour was working on Memphis Bell, a film about a Second World War B-17 bomber, when the set designer found he was short one crucial part. And I was sitting in his office and then he came in and he said to me, you wouldn't have a mid-upper turret in your collection, would you? And I said, well, I have them, but I know a man who has, you know. And then I got my little black book out and phoned this chap up in Hull, who's a plumber. And I said to Colin, you've uh, you still got them? You still got that B-17 mid-upper turret? He said, yeah. I said, would you like to hire it? He said, yeah. He said, but it's got no perspex in it. I said, it will have when it comes back. Now semi-retired, Mike has sold off most of his military stock. But after a lifetime tracking down hard-to-find bits of gear, there is one masterpiece, an engine from an old fighter, that he will never part with. Yeah, I have three first-stage compressor fans from the TSR2. And they are the finest piece of engineering you've ever seen. They are absolutely beautiful. I would love them in the house, but the wife says no. The cameras are about to roll for the last time on the science fiction film Beam Me Up at the workshop of Lee Took, spaceship designer. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Director Robbie Moffat has trusted Lee to get on with it and make his original sketch a reality. Uh, I think I had a pretty clear vision of what the spaceship was. It's just uh, 
cigar shit, you know, something like that, you know. But then a wee bit fatter, like a Zeppelin, you know. I think a Zeppelin's like that, isn't it? And it's got a little wing thing, it's like a fish. I haven't seen it. Somewhere, oh, here we are. This was our original drawing. Uh, a sort of thumbnail sketch of what we were, you know, the sort of spacecraft we were looking at trying to build. And this is what Lee and his team have come up with. Back at the edit suite, Robbie is pushing ahead to finish his movie without the two missing rolls of film. It's going to be tough on his editor, Simon Harris. Uh, the rest now is uh, to finish by 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Are you, on, are, you on, are you on course? Yeah, pretty much that, you know. Uh, this is for the editor, but he never uses it. He just sleeps on the couch, you know. <laughs> We've been working hard, haven't we, Simon, on this film? Yeah, yeah, look, he, he didn't go to bed last night. He came in this morning and he's lying on the sofa. <laughs> and there's another shock for Robbie. After the reshoot for the hair in the gate, now there's a purple patch on his film. What's that purple bleed at the top of there? It's the... Magnet in those speakers on that radio, I should think. We should probably take off there. Oh, is that, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's better, Simon. Sorry about that. <laughs> back at the workshop and Lee's finished the spaceship. He has enjoyed getting back to building and shooting real models without relying on CG, computer graphics, to do all his special effects for him. These days it tends all to go in the computer. An opportunity like this it's, it's an excuse to sort of go back to the old days, really. We've dusted off all our old kit and uh, haven't relied upon the, the, the CG area. Yep. And this is the final result. But is it what the director had in mind? Lee will soon find out. Robbie and Mari are about to inspect their spaceship for the very first time. Oh, yeah, look at that. Hey, that, that works for me. Wow. Wow, yeah. Rough pump that we did, just a very rough, so... The camera moves to give the effect of motion. No, I think it's really good, you know. I think it should match in with what we've shot. And compared to my original drawing, this is, uh, you know, much, much better. I mean, I just drew a fish. Lee spent more time on this project than he really should have. But then he does love spaceships. It's good to sort of put something back in and uh, hopefully when they get their big budget films, they come back and talk to us. That's the plan. <laughs> it feels like there's a storm coming at the underwater stage. The ambitious shooting schedule is slipping. The location producer, Francoise Valentine, is determined to get it back on track. Quiet, please, everyone. I mean quiet. The two actors, Kevin and Axel, have already been in the water for over an hour. Mike Valentine, the underwater cameraman, is in position at the bottom of the tank and ready to go. One! Action, Axel! Kevin! Cut! With her is director Hans Herberts. Too fast, isn't it? No, no, no. Uh... Or what? He is a perfectionist. Let's do one more time, and if Mike can pan a little bit more between the two faces, that would be nice. So everything has to be reset again for exactly the same shot. Two! One! No. Action and effects! Thank you! I will. And turn over! Mike pans his camera round. Surely this time they've got the shot. We've cut, thank you, everyone. Oh, Happy? Uh, <laughs> okay, Mikey, lots of scaffolding in the background. Lots of scaffolding. I don't want to make my again. It's a job for the underwater crew, shifting all the scaffolding across the tank. That done, Mike and his team get back in position. They've yet to film even the first part of the sequence. With every retake, Kevin, the lead actor, has to swim down six metres with no breathing equipment. Take after take. The director sometimes getting him to look down to camera. Or to drop the knife. 
and every new shot is taking its toll. He's gone. He's gone. OK. Cut! Hans can't push him anymore. His star, Kevin, is shattered. He's uh, running out of breath too quickly. You can do it once, but four or five times, it's really... Uh... It looks like the director might not get his sequence after all. I'm exhausted. I'm really exhausted. The decision is taken to break for lunch to give Kevin a chance to recover. Meanwhile, the Belgian crew know they have four key shots to get today. And it's taken them all morning just to get the first one. Whenever you're happy, we'll set again, thank you. It's crunch time for the director. Action, Kevin! The first shot is a close-up of the man being pulled under. Are we it's a good take. So they decide to push We're on. Doing We're doing a rehearsal, are we? Shoot the rehearsal. Action! The rehearsal looks good on camera. And on the fifth take of the final shot... Cut! We've cut! They've got it all, as they say, in the can. I never thought we were going to make it in time. There was so much uh, we had to do today, but um, I have to say it was uh, it's amazing. You know, things can speed up when they have to speed up, so... Relieved. Next week, what has to happen before any premiere? The Belgians' last gasp attempt to get their final shot. Don't let your actors go ape. And Robbie Moffat's in Cannes for his world premiere. But where is the film? We don't have a movie.